Today we'll be finishing the trader legacy or die trying. Oh, avoid them please, thank you very much. I'm not messing with that, you know. After narrowly avoiding those bloaters, Terry heads out into the darkness to start his first trade deal. He's got to chat the carter of the three riders to see what they need. But I'm never particularly careful with my choice of entrance. Hello friends, I'm here to broker a deal. I tidy up the neighbourhood, then kick in the door. Hello, how's it going? Yes, I know I'm quite loud, but that's alright. Carter, carter, carter. We've got a ton of tobacco, but we're light on hygienic goods. Think you could find some to hook us up. But before I have chance to respond, the window shatters. Oh, for crying out loud. But me and my apocalypse back get shit done. But when I try to restart the trade talks, it seems Carter is playing hard to get. Will you stop running about? I'm trying to trade with you. Now, which one is it? Right, you. Not you. Sandman. What a shit name. You should be bloody ashamed of yourself. Imagine naming yourself after a Spider-Man villain. Not sure about hygienics, but I've got a buyer in mind for your tobacco. But it seems a trader's work is never done. Now I've got to talk to Trell, who's a book collector. And lucky for me, Trell is a local lass. Because we got to think of the ecological impacts of these trade deals. That and I've put all of my fuel into Molotovs. And the remember when you're meeting new people, it's always important to establish yourself as the alpha. So I try hitting her with my car. Hello. Oh, do you see that? She tried to aim a gun at me. She must be a baddie. Actually, it turns out she was actually trying to be kind of nice. And she was trying to take out a zombie that was on my rectum. Swear to God, love, shoot my car one more time, right? And you're going to see a nasty side of me. It also seems that she knows a thing or two about establishing herself as the alpha. Bitch! To be fair, she's actually pretty sound-like. She just wants a strawberry flavour jewel to enjoy her high-quality entertainment. What kind of high-quality entertainment requires tobacco? Probably the kind of entertainment that's only found on a certain type of street. Or, say, maybe a district with plenty plenty of red lights on it. She then gifts me a strange pink figurine, but calling it strange is putting it very lightly. It resembles a nightmarish combination of a pig and a dolphin. Whoever created this was clearly disturbed. So I walk away with the serial killer paraphernalia and make my way over to the surviving soldiers, who clearly didn't get the memo about protecting the environment, seen as they're pissing miles away. Anyway, I do eventually get there, and it might just be me, but it seems like a bit of awkward tension is in the air. I know we haven't spoke for a while, probably since your mate died if I remember correctly. It just flat out abandons me. What a bitch. But any chance you got some shit to sell? We've got a surplus of hygienic items, but we're bored out of our minds. Do you know anyone with some good entertainment? We have ourselves a trade triangle, and I got a buyer and a supplier for you. He gives me a tube of toothpaste and 200 influence for my troubles, which is actually pretty insulting when you think about it. It's the apocalypse for fuck's sake. I apologise if my teeth aren't up to your extremely high standard. Jesus Christ. Well, gotta love a road trip right back to where I just was. So basically, Mickey Wilkerson jumped on the radio and he has some high valuable stashes for me to check out. And while I'm waiting for the next trader mission to spawn, I figure it's a worthwhile distraction. Off out into the country, you see. Gotta go find a, a hidden stash. Question is, how the bloody hell do I get it? Unfortunately, there's not a rock climbing mechanic in this game and my spiky muscle car isn't exactly designed for the off-road. I'm gonna end up using all my fuel now. Genuinely, I just feel like I'm riding in circles around a mountain. It actually takes me so long to find this bloody stash. The next trader mission spawns and it seems the surviving soldiers are having issues with one of our trade partners. Can we talk in private? No, not right now. I'm in the middle of doing Wilkerson's treasure. Honest to God. I need some stuff to be able to sell to you, don't I? That's what being a trader's all about. Commodities that you can sell to gullible idiots. Thankfully, I do find the stash. Aha! Look at this! Ooh, we got a family photo. Couldn't give a shit. Why would I give a shit about a Polaroid when there's explosives to be taken? But unfortunately, the next stash disappears off my radar. Wait, why does it not tell me where the next one was? Oh, honest to God, I thought I was going to get some good shit, like... Nope, unfortunately, I'm not allowed any more free explosives. Instead, I've got to go speak to Mickey at the pub to discuss this old Polaroid. So I rock up to the pub, clear out the neighbourhood, but then disaster strikes. The thing's going to fall apart. Oh, great. Really? That's like my favourite gun. And that's not the only bad. Bad news. He wanted to meet me in the pub and then he's locked the bloody door. Luckily, I'm an adult and handle the situation appropriately. For that, Mickey, I'm taking out the window. That's exactly what he deals with. I show him the photo and he's like, oh yeah, that's actually my brother and his fella, who's actually the brother of Lily Ritter, that network woman. Lily refuses to speak to Mickey anymore, but he has a plan to change her mind. Honestly, this whole thing just reminds me of an episode of Jed and Me, Kyle. But before we go, I refuel at a nearby outpost. Honest God, so much traveling today, it's unreal. Somebody think of the environment. Greta is absolutely absolutely seething right now. But most importantly, I also repaired my AK. So basically, Lily's got some unspecified disease, and Mickey knows exactly where to get some very specific drugs in order to treat it. Nothing says I'm a worthwhile friend, like withholding life-saving medicine. I can hear you, you know, silently judging me. You know? Yeah, so you should, mate. That's disgusting behaviour. Anyway, I rock up, kill a zombie or three.
and find this super drug hidden in a trash shed. We then travel to a nearby town to meet this network runner. We give her the meds, then Mickey gives me a Prepper's AK-47. Damn, son, he's just giving me the same gun I've already got. That seems like a success to me. Mickey decides to walk home, and I decide to try and find a toolkit for my car. However, the state of decay gods have a different plan for me, as my windows shatter from a nearby screamer, and I get chased by a triple pack of ferals. Thankfully, I'm quick as fuck. Okay, actually, maybe not that quick. But I manage to shake him off, and with a couple of roly polies, thanks to my insane stamina, Gunslinger comes in clutch once more. And obviously, gunfire will draw crowds, but there's nothing Terry hasn't dealt with a million times. Before. Come on, nobody fucks with Terry. Terry is the greatest Red Talon character of all time, and everybody knows it. And if you ever get overwhelmed, don't forget to drop an incendiary. And the comment section will be insanely proud of me, because I didn't even singe an eyebrow. Parents, don't get on fire. I actually find a toolkit in the first container I search in. It certainly seems the gods have blessed Terry today. However, it seems the stranded soldiers got tired of waiting, and are no longer on the map. So Terry heads home to take a well-deserved rest. As you can see, the bloke is bloody shattered like. So we take over as bones, because the comic book collector he dealt with previously needs his help. She's surrounded by the undead and it seems unlikely she's gonna make it out alive. So I head off with the utmost of urgency, making sure not to stop for anything. Excuse me a second, let me just take care of these. And I just can't help myself. I just love a fireball. However, on my way, I make a terrifying discovery. It seems the zombies are evolving. I run into three screamers and decide to take them out with the arse of my car. Oh, what the fuck? What the... What the hell was that? Oh my god, I was just trying to tactically take him out. That screamer's obviously a massive roid head in order to eat me across the map that far. To teach these bastards a lesson, I decide overkill is the only justice. That was incredibly disappointing, I'm sure we'll all agree. Luckily, at this point in my state of decayed career, I'm an experienced professional and can take down three screamers without a single issue. What the hell is going on? Why do bad things happen to good people? I'm just so confused. That probably answers your own question, but I'll be honest with you. Your sins are coming back to bite you in the fucking arse, son. I will never run from a fight. It's not in my blood. Luckily, my mission objective is right where this incident occurred. So I clear out a horde that's playing musical statues and rescue the comic book collector, who I've just realised is actually the woman we talked to earlier. Thanks, now get me home safely and that comic is yours, I swear. Well, I'm bloody glad about that, I'm not gonna lie to you, love, because if you had dragged me all the way across the bloody map with the offer of a super rare comic book as a reward, then decided not to give it to me, I would be absolutely bloody seething. There you go, Trell. Now give me that comic book. Thank you. I didn't expect that. Okay, now let's see that copy of the gentleman cadaver. I don't keep my comics here, of course. You bitch. I think I handled this as maturely as humanly possible. She's quick enough to snipe my molly out of the air. Oh shit, oh shit. But not quick enough to take a second shot. And seeing as there's only one of her, I have no reason to let up on my gunfire. Motherfucker. That's what you get for dealing with me. Don't mess with the cult. Occupational hazard at this point, isn't it? She actually had an half decent amount of supplies. So hey, maybe this murderous rampage was worth it in the end. We then head back to base to swap back to Terry, who's now napped and fully recovered, which is fully necessary as we have the trader legacy to complete. Apparently Josh from the Scouts, no, I've never heard of them either, has some concerns about one of our trade partners. It's fair to say I'm absolutely shocked when I find out what Josh has to tell me. I heard our friends, the Denizens, are planning to ambush the trade summit and take everything. I obviously choose the option that'll lead to violence, then head over to the Denizens to pay them a little visit. And they're actually set up in a really quaint residence residential area. Well, I say that, it's quaint for the apocalypse. You've just got to ignore all of the abandoned cars. I park with extreme precision, allowing me to use the car as cover. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Because my plan is a diabolical one. Rooftop sniper. A couple of shots get fired, but it seems the sniper's not willing to get his hands dirty. Are they only after zombies? I even try using the Cleo fire support. And while they're firing a lot more often, they still refuse to target the living. So I move in, keeping my head as low as possible. You all know how lethal hostiles can be on Nightmare Zone. I managed to pop a headshot through a window, and as he drops down in agony, I follow it up with a couple of Molotovs. I get 12 influence for taking a human life, that's like using Instagram during the purge. The second drops to his knees and tries to close the door to shelter from the gunfire. But my mollies are sneaky bastards and manage to sneak their way through. I open the door and execute the second in the back of the head. And with only one left, I decide to give her a chance to surrender. Surrender, and I will let you live. 
That was definitely self-defense. She came charging at me and definitely reaching for a weapon. I said, surrender, and I shall let you live. But she refuses my mercy, so I ignite her with burning petrol. But that barely slows her down, and she still comes at me with a shank. So two more shots to the face finishes the fight. And I didn't even lose a smidge of damage. What an absolute legend. Honestly, if you still refuse to like and subscribe at this point, it's basically a hate crime. I loot the dead like a William Burke and William Hare. What can I say? This show has suddenly got very cultured. No, do not look at my Google search history. There's a mysterious wandering trader in the area, and I've got plenty of shite from the corpses to sell him. One of his potential locations is in this little shed, but I find something much, much worse. Oh shit, no, but there's a feral! I retreat with haste, and after a roly-poly, burn everything to the fucking ground. <laughs> that gives me a chance to retreat back to the car and make my great escape. I'm just glad I had a chance to put my seatbelt on, because whiplash is no fucking joke. I arrive at the mysterious wandering trader, and after flexing my quick draw abilities, I do what I do best by saving the innocents with burning diesel. But unfortunately, zombies tend to remain standing while on fire, and that can cause a singe eyebrow or two. But eventually, we clear the hordes, and I'm able to initiate the trade. And this guy is absolutely stacked. So I sell him all of the shit I robbed from those corpses, then buy myself the Eternal Guard's Infinite Rage, as well as an advanced suppressor and a firearms training manual. That will allow me to retrain one of my community members so I can unlock gunslinging in another character. But this shopping spree has left me a little light on influence. So firstly, I search the entirety of the house the trader's hiding out in, then sell it all back to him. I then make sure to store my new gun and book in the boot of my car to free up some space so I can fully search the neighborhood. I then repeat this process over and over again. That is until a juggernaut follows me back to base. Well, I say base, what I actually mean is the trader's temporary base. Thankfully, juggernauts are fat and ugly and can't fit through little tiny doors. That allows me to get inside, sell all of my shite so I'm nice and light to initiate this fight. Now obviously I could be boring and pop shots from the safety of this house, but you know that's not how we handle shit on this channel. Oh no! Terence. Unfortunately, I don't have any healables, but thankfully I do have over 60 high calibered rifle rounds. And when switching to full auto, absolutely decimate the big girl. That's it, that's it, that's it. I then piggyback and stab him in the back like I'm trying to clout chase. Terence will always prevail. Oh, no, 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 no. But don't worry, it's no drama. I'm able to beat them off. That is until another triple pack of feral shoes the commotion. Oh, shit. It's, that's more than one feral, mate. That's more than one feral. Luckily, I've got gunslinger and these guys haven't got armored heads, so it won't be an issue. Oh, shit. No, 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 not Terry! I button bash like my life depends on it. Terence must survive. Come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. No! Not Terry! But the three ferals had him pinned and he wasn't able to get back up. What the fuck? Can I get the biggest and loudest R.I.P. Terry in the comment section? He's been with us for well over six months now and proven his athleticism time and time again. He's had the plague more times than a medieval peasant. He's taken out more innocent hostiles than the U.S. government. And he saved Trumbull Valley from the blood plague. He was the greatest red talon soldier a boy could ask for. But perhaps he wasn't as popular with the community as I realized. Oh, and home status happens to be cheap. Fun. Bunch of fucking two-faced bastards. But now you lot in the comment section will be able to pick our next leader. So who will it be? Laura, Loren, Bones, Jamie, or Gaz? 